Hello again. This is an update from our last video uh, that we made. Um, we've had some requests from people asking us to, um, about the parts and stuff and what we use to do. Uh, we try to do a rundown in our last video, so we're going to do a little bit more detail here. And we're even going to bark these things a little bit. We're going to bark them at 40 pounds. I'm going to go over here and show you on our little rig here. See if you can see that it's set to 40 pounds. And we're going to pause it after every bark because we want to. We don't want the air compressor to pop back on. But uh, here's that the one right here. It's a Nathan M3. That's the first one we built, um, so you can see it's kind of, you know, crude a little bit. This is the one you saw in the last video. It's an Nathan M5. Uh, we're pretty thrilled about that one. And then the one you just saw the frame in the last video, this is a Leslie RS5T. Um, and we're going to show you what they sound like here. And um, we're only going to put 40 pounds. And then at a later date, we will make another video of blowing 120 pounds through them. And we're going to use a DB reader to see how loud they actually are. And uh, But we don't want to do that here because we live in a small neighborhood and we like our neighbors and we want them to keep liking us. So uh, I'm going to pause this here and now we'll get to the, the horn here. This is the uh, Nathan M3. <laughs> Here is a, an exploded view of uh, the parts and stuff that we actually use to do this. Uh, you see it's kind of crude a little bit. And I know I'm shaking a little bit. It's hard to hold this camera. But there is a link in the description of this video to a digital copy of this. So you can see that, print it out, do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say um, this is straight us. We didn't steal this from anybody. Um, and you'll see that, you know, sometimes when we go to Lowe's, they have different parts. And you'll see the difference with this video or that horn and this horn right here, we had to use a few different parts because Lowe's was out of stock. And we will show you one thing on this one that we did not like was you see that uh, that bell is kind of sticking on there really good. Uh, the upper C sharp, it was really high, hard to get there The uh, as we were tuning it. We just couldn't get there. It just was not high enough, so we had to cut that bell out and uh, move it back here. And that, that's not shown on the description of the... Uh, on the plan, so uh, we just wanted to make that noted. All right, a few things that we've learned last time and how we went about building this particular horn. Uh, I'll just go ahead and show you. You notice the marks that we have here, and I'm gonna explain how we did this and in, in the tuning or whatever. This mark lines up, so every time we put it back in there, it has the same amount of pressure against the diaphragm. And what this does is just screws out. And there's your complete bell, complete and finished. And how we came to get this is when before we glued any of this in there or put our pipe in, this adapter piece we took and just screwed in there without any tape until we felt it start to get a little friction in the threads. At that point, we stopped. We measured from the back of the diaphragm to the edge of this. And that way we knew how far that would the end of this would have to be from here. And by using the threads, that gives us a little free play to be able to screw it a little tighten, tighter or looser to obtain the correct amount of pressure against there because it does make a huge difference. So each time that we tuned it, or you know, attempted to tube it, we started out with a long piece of pipe, seen what it was, you know, and took about a half quarter inch increments each time. We'd come back, we put soap, liquid hand soap around these threads and that keeps it from seizing up. We'll screw it back in, get our measurement, line line the dots back up where they where we was, and then we would see uh, put our bell on here, mark it, the exact location. We would tune, okay, we need, you know, it's still not high enough. We would keep doing that until we got it dead on in tune. But when we first knew the strength, we used 10 pounds of pressure through a regulator and we would just turn the air on and after we got this in here we would just turn until the horn started making noise and at that point we turned until you notice a, a difference in the pitch 
at that point you're too far so then you back it off you know like there that's too much pressure so then we backed it off until we was happy with the tone of it and that's when we made our mark and everything is set from there and each bell is different and like the next one that we build i'll explain a little more in a minute but i need to figure out a way to get this pipe shorter because the upper c sharp is so short it's hard to get and we are not at all happy with with this bell because on the other bill we did not use the uh the uh coupling in the back and the only difference i saw that that make is it has about 20 percent more surface area here in order to to blow the horn now I, as far as volume tone quality i found no difference maybe it does but that's yet to be determined we're going to make another video we're going to build one bell we're going to try different diaphragms and different uh ideas and i have a few that i want to try and we're going to use a decimal meter and we're going to see what each one does but <clears throat> earlier we said that we had a thin piece of polycarbonate in this one it did not work it was loud it made noise but it kept changing tones the more pressure you put to it so we ended up on this one we used two of the thick and two of the thin on the small bells and that seems to have an overall good sound and it maintains good sound quality now what what we use for our diaphragms is if you have a welding supply store anywhere in your area that's what we use this is a hundred percent polycarbonate well clear welding lens and you can see the differences in the thick and the thin and i've mic'd them and i know that this is what we used the 0.078 is the thick one and the 0.46 is the thin one so all in all i mean we're happy with the way this sounds but we learned with a lot of research we found a website <clears throat> that actually detailed leslie of what they did they used to have uh, a generic manifold with eighth inch holes which we found that no train uses any hole bigger than eighth inch and i'm talking about the power source going into the chamber itself here so each one of these we end up replugging from the early, earlier video, and you can see right here of the size holes that we drilled through each one of these, which is a correct size. So what Leslie did, they went back and they decided to make their diaphragms with an eighth inch hole all, through all of them, and then they used a bushing in each one, depending on what bell you make, to make that particular horn. Okay, the Nathan, the M on the M5 actually stands for maximum. And we got really lucky because it was get, it was a guess. When we built this horn, we put an eighth inch hole in each one of these. And that's what Nathan did, but they had to have different diaphragms in each one of theirs. So we want to do another video and build another horn sometime in the future. And we're going to use all three inch power chambers because that's what Leslie does. Their power chambers are the same. They use this hole pattern in which we took a gamble with this and it's still not as close a replica as we want to do. So we'll be coming up with another video and we'll have the decimal meter out. We're going to give you some more knowledge of whatever we learn and we're going to sound these horns at correct PSI and do a decimal meter and that's where we stand. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.